We're outside Forest Bank, where I spent quite a lot of my adulthood in addiction. I couldn't really say that I had any main interests at the time. I was stuck in addiction and I was looking for answers what I couldn't find. 14 sentences I've done. Longest one, 22 months. And the shortest being of a month and doing two weeks. The sweat box is a vehicle what they used to import you to prison into. Very hot. Um, very emotional inside because you know you're being took away from the people that you love. Straight in from the bottom here, straight up to the top, they come on with a dog. The dog sniffs about to see if there's any um, substances that shouldn't be there. They put you in the waiting area, then they see what cell you're going to go in. And as soon as you go into that cell, the door gets locked. I think here we are again, same old rigmarole. If you're here for a shorter period of time, I don't think they've got as much help to access you on a quick, on a quick notice sort of thing. When you come into prison, you'll see a doctor when you come in. The chaplain will come to see you and they'll ask you how you are, they'll ask you if you need to make a phone call. You get assigned a carrot worker and they come and see you and sort of explain what sort of help's available, how they could help you. But in a short period of time, the carrot workers may have or another hundred people to see. So by the time they've come back around to seeing you again, you're out, your time's finished and you're out into society. And I think it's more about putting into place what sort of access of help they can get once they get released from custody. And if you're in here for a short while, you've not got much to go off. If you're in here for a long period of time, there's a lot more avenues you can do a bit of research on what sort of help you need. So you get a chance to do a detox if you want, and I suppose on the shortest sentence, I think I was still going with, through withdrawal by the time I got out of the gates, and so I'd not finished the detox by the time I'd left. So I was basically got out and I still needed the script. Sometimes the script won't hold you because of the amount of medication what you're on. I've been in the system for a very long time, I've probably been involved with 50% of the population in here before. There's many people that I'll know in here just through addiction. I hadn't accessed the, sort, the support that I needed to gain to help me understand about addiction. I wasn't willing to put the action and effort in what I've put in today. Coming down off drugs and getting back in touch with your emotions, I think they're like the key times when you need to be doing something and accessing some help because if you sit with that in yourself, things are not going to change. Maybe more programmes in prison where they're raising awareness. We do we practice a ramp reduction and motivation programme. If there was more stuff like that inside prisons, I think they'd benefit from it a lot more. Because maybe if that was the case that they did that 10 years ago, I may have got the awareness and I may, we may not be stood here talking about this today. I've, I suppose I've thought of the victims and felt sorry for what I'd done. I was a shoplifter is what I used to do to gain my money and I used to tell myself well it's all right it's, I'm taken from the insured I'm not taken out of somebody's pocket I suppose it was just a ways of means of getting what I wanted to live the life I wanted at the time and I wouldn't have influenced anybody else to do the same you know it was the wrong choices what I made in my life and I didn't enjoy that no I think the things that I've learnt now is that I wasn't the only person being punished. At the time I don't think I felt how my family would feel and what they was going through and what pressures they got through it. I suppose in addiction you don't sort of understand where they're coming from. What I do remember from coming in, you get, you get the chance to have a phone call and I can remember always ringing my dad. He used to say to me, all right, son, I know where you are. I even recognise the number. At least, son, I know where you are. I can go, I can get to sleep tonight. And that's one thing what sticks out in my head, and he's said it to me I don't know how many times. 